In this lesson, we will look at how to obtain the governing equations for turbulent flows. You might be wondering that you already know that the Navier-Stokes equations are the one true set of equations to describe all the fluid flows. Then why should I worry about another set of governing equations to describe just the turbulent flows? Well, we already know that turbulence is an extremely difficult beast to tame. This is evident from the fact that there are no exact solutions of the Navier-Stokes equations for a turbulent flow. You might then ask, I have a supercomputer, why can't I use state-of-the-art numerical algorithms or CFD to solve the original Navier-Stokes equations? Well, there is a problem there too. We know that turbulence is a high Reynolds number phenomenon and the scales of turbulent flows increase with increasing Reynolds number. If you were to resolve every scale of the flow for a practical industrial problem, say flow over a car, which is at a Reynolds number of 1 million, you would require approximately 31 trillion cells. So it is safe to say that it is practically impossible even in today's day and age. It is therefore necessary to identify simplifications that permit a practical study of turbulent flows. One such is the Reynolds averaging of the Navier-Stokes equations, or RANS, which we will discuss in this lesson. Take a general turbulent flow case. If we measure any flow property at any point in the flow, we should expect to see a graph that looks like below. The large wavelength oscillations are because of the flow changes and the high frequency variation is the impact of the turbulent structures on the mean flow. For any flow quantity, this separation can be written mathematically as shown here. The mean quantity is obtained by time averaging the value of the instantaneous property over a large amount of time. This large amount of time is selected such that the time average of all the fluctuations over this range is zero. Osborne Reynolds recast the Navier-Stokes equations using this decomposition and these equations are called the Reynolds averaged Navier-Stokes equations or RANS equations in short. These equations describe the mean fluid flow and we will soon see why and how turbulence comes into picture. Let us quickly redo what Reynolds did to obtain the RANS equations. For simplicity, we will consider the incompressible Navier-Stokes equations with no body forces. Note that this assumption is just for our discussion. Reynolds averaging can be performed for the full Navier-Stokes equations. Let us now decompose just the continuity equation. If we now time average, because of the fact that time averaging of fluctuations is zero, all the fluctuation terms can be dropped and we arrive at the following equation, which is the RANS continuity equation. This form is identical to the original continuity equation except that it is now time averaged and is valid only for the mean flow. Let us apply the same technique to the momentum equation. After removing and rearranging the terms, we arrive at the following equation which is the RANS momentum equation. Notice the circle term. It is the time average of the product of fluctuating velocities. It can be thought of as a stress applied due to the fluctuating velocity field and is generally referred to as the Reynolds stress. This Reynolds stress is a result 
of time averaging the momentum equation and cannot be neglected in turbulent flows. Let us now rearrange the momentum equation as shown here, where tau is the total stress tensor which is the sum of the laminar and the turbulent stresses. The Reynolds stress term is a tensor, meaning that we have nine terms, all of which are unknown and were created as a result of time averaging. Let us take a step back now. Starting from the incompressible Navier-Stokes equations, where we had four equations, one for continuity and three for momentum for four unknowns, that is pressure, u, v and w components of velocity, we ended up with four equations with 13 unknowns after time averaging. Nine of these unknowns are the Reynolds stresses. In order to make these set of equations well defined, we either need to have additional governing equations, one each for the Reynolds stress terms, or express the Reynolds stress tensor in terms of the mean flow variables, thereby avoiding any new equations. This conundrum is referred to as the closure problem and has been a field of significant research even to this day. The effect of turbulence and its impact on the flow field is a consequence of how well these terms are approximated. As a result, there is a significant emphasis on modeling these terms. The science, or some even refer to it as the art of turbulence modeling. Unlike the viscous stresses, which were related to the strain rate through rigorous physical arguments, no such exacting approach can be emulated for the Reynolds stress terms. With that, we will wrap up this discussion.